This video includes two lectures that are a part of my online Excel VBA course. The first one covers object properties and the second one is on methods. Now I do warn you, there's a bit of theory here, but it's really important to understand the theory if you want to be able to write your code from scratch or to tweak the code that you find on internet forums. Properties and methods help you do things with objects. A property is basically what an object has, and a method is what you do with an object. So it's what an object does. Now, let's take a look at an analogy first. You have, let's say, two real life objects. We have a car and we have a shoe. Cars have different properties to shoes, right? We have the color, we have the size, type, engine, and let's say age of the car. Then for the shoe, we have some things that can be in common, like color, the size can be in common, and then we have things like gender, material, and season for the shoe. Right, so they have these predefined type of properties. Now the same thing applies to Excel objects. They have predefined set of properties. Now, it's important to note that properties come after the object hierarchy. So in the last lecture, we took a look at that object hierarchy and we saw that they were separated by this dot. So the properties come after those dots. Let's take a look at this example. That would be like car.color. But this property might be too broad because you could have a color for the inside, a color for the outside, right? So you might have more details instead. You could have car.interior.color is black. And for your shoe, you could say shoe.gender is male, but shoe.heel.material is, and I put a question mark because I have no idea what the material for heels are. Okay, but you get the point that you can have property details. Okay, so let's take a look at this in Excel, how that would look. So let's look at one that doesn't have details. That would be something like range a1.address or range a1.value. Okay, there's no detail. You get the cell address or you get the cell value. Now, you can have properties with details, and this is something that's called when properties return an object. And this phrase, that can be confusing to people. Like, what does it mean that properties return objects? It means this. Just think about the shoe. We had shoe.heel.material, right? So the heel is a property of the shoe because shoes can have heels or no heels, but a heel is also an object, right? So it's kind of both. Now it's the same thing with this range.interior.color or range.font.color, okay? Because that color belongs to the font here and this color here belongs to the interior here. And if you look in Microsoft Help, you see that it's the interior property okay, which returns an interior object. Okay, and if this confuses you, think about the heel. That's what I do. Next thing to note is that properties can be read-only or they can be both. You can read and write to them. Let's take a look at the first one. What do you think this one is? Read-only or both? just read only, right? So you can't change the address of a cell, you can just read the address of a cell. So what about this one? Read and write. This one, this one, read and write. So you can get the font color, you can get the color of the cell, but you can also change the font color and change the color of the cell. Let's do some examples. We can say range a1.value, is active cell the address. So we're using it on the other side of the formula. So we're reading the address and we're putting it in range A1. Okay, or we have range A1.interior.color and we're setting it to red. Okay, so in this case, we're actually writing over this. The same here, we're changing the color of the font to blue. So that's basically it on properties. Just remember that Properties come after the object hierarchy, and properties can have details. So that was the properties part. Now let's move on to methods.
A method is something that an object does. Let's go back to our shoe and car analogy and let's take a look at some of the methods that they could have. So a car can start, it can stop, it can crash. That was the only methods I could come up with. A shoe, you can put on a shoe, you can take off a shoe, right? So these are things that you can do with these objects. Now, the other thing is that methods can have additional arguments or additional information. For example, how do you want to start the car? Do you want to start it quickly or do you want to start it slowly, right? So quickly and slowly are arguments of the stop method, let's say, or the start method. And the way you would write it in VBA is you have the car dot stop, right? So you have your object dot method, and then you have the argument, but you don't have that argument separated with a dot. There are different ways of writing this. So that's one way that you put a space and then you separate arguments with a comma, just like you do in the formula bar. Or you can write it in this way, where you have a name for each of these arguments and you write them with this colon and an equal sign. Okay, like this one, let's say how we start the car, that argument is called stop style and we would type it stop style colon and the equal sign. Another important concept here is that methods can change properties. Okay, how? Well, with our car example, if we use the crash method on the car, we could change the size property of the car. Let's switch to how this applies all to Excel. We said that methods can have arguments, but they don't necessarily have arguments. It really depends on the method, right? So just like it depended on the property, if it had details or not, it's the same with methods. And these are already predefined. So the clear method on the range object doesn't have any arguments, right? That's it. You just say dot clear and that's it. Now the delete method has arguments and it has one optional argument, which is how do you want to shift? Do you want to shift the cells up? Do you want to shift them to the left? The copy method, so this is the copy of the sheet, okay, not of the range. That one has two optional arguments. You can say copy before a sheet or after a sheet. Now these arguments are optional, but they're also exclusive. So you can't mention both of them, otherwise you get an error. Let's do some more examples here. If we say range a2.delete, and we want to specify how we want this delete to happen, we specify it like this, right? So we just put a space and then we put the argument in there. If we want to copy a range, okay, so not a sheet now, we want to copy a range, we can say where we want to copy it to because the copy method has destination as its argument. So it keeps everything on one line. We don't have to say copy and then go somewhere else and say dot paste. We just say dot copy and we mention the destination in its argument. But we also have the ability to use the paste special method where we have all the arguments we have when we use in Excel, you know, when we copy a cell and go to paste special, we can say if we want to paste values, if we want to paste formatting, if we want to paste it as transpose, and so on. And those arguments is the arguments of the paste special method. Okay, so in this case, in this example, I'm just saying paste as values. And because it's the first one in the argument, I just put a space there and mentioned the argument directly. Okay, if you want to avoid that, you just want to skip to, let's say, a last argument. For example, in this case where I'm copying a sheet, I don't want to talk about the before. I just want to say it should copy it after. I can mention the name of the arguments. I say after and I put the sheet name. But if I wanted to write this the other way, it will look like this. This way I'm putting a comma first because I want to skip the before argument and go to the after argument. Okay, so it's up to you which method you want to use when you are writing your VBA code. Some people prefer this method because they know what you're referring to and some people prefer this one. 
Now, I use a mix of both methods. Sometimes, because it's faster to go this way and I'm used to the Excel formulas, I pretty much, I guess, most of the time, I would go with this method. Okay, but it's really up to you. Just pick the method that you feel most comfortable with. Now, it's difficult to remember the properties and methods of all of these objects, right? Because there's so many objects, there's so many different properties and methods for them. You are going to end up remembering a few because you're going to use them a lot, but a lot of it you're not going to remember. Okay, but there's nothing to worry there. No one expects you to remember any of that. You just have to know where to look to find them. And that's what I'm going to show you in the next lecture. I do go in more detail inside the course, so if you're interested to find out more, check out the link in the description of this video or go to xelplus.com courses.